it's convenient for us to talk about different classes of bonding. All right, secondary, ionic, covalent, metallic. But the truth of the matter is, uh, real materials are not simple, one type of a bonding. There's usually a, a mixture, right? You've got, you know, cad selenide, which is a mixture of covalent and ionic. You've got graphite, which is a mixture of uh, covalent, metallic, and uh, uh, secondary, van der Waals. Two, which is again covalent, ionic, and you have Van der Waals, particularly if you have uh, uh, you're talking about interaction with uh, surfaces. Uh, so these are these are uh, oversimplifications that we use in order to be able to. Uh, teach you how each one of the mechanisms work. So we're going to do that, but you know, bear in mind that at the end of the day, uh, everything does come down to uh, being a, a true mixture of, of mechanisms. So I wanted to start today by talking about uh, secondary bonding. Uh, secondary bonding, this is the weakest of, of the four classes of bonding, but that, in many cases, makes it one of the more important. Uh, if you, you're thinking about uh, situations in, in which uh, you know, the weakest link is, is what controls it, for example, the uh, absorption of uh, uh, surface uh, species, uh, secondary bonding has uh, different names. and. For example, uh, Van der Waals bonding, a, a Van der Waals, uh, and that's kind of the generic uh, term for it. Uh, hydrogen bonding. when you have some molecular species and you have a hydrogen atom that has donated its electrons to the uh, its parent uh, constituent, leaving a, a positive charge on the surface, uh, and it bonds in a secondary or van der Waals nature to its surroundings. Uh, another common term is London dispersion forces. And this is uh, a subset of Van der Waals bonds in which the uh, dipole that's uh, the dipoles that are interacting are induced. Uh, so the, the species originally don't have uh, intrinsic dipoles. Uh, the cohesive uh, energies. Of these bonds are typically 50 to 200 MeV per atom, making them fairly uh, small. Uh, in this class, I use electron volt because electron volts are really handy to work with. They're not SI, so if you're an engineer and like SI, you can convert this to uh, to minus 19 joules, uh, but I'd rather not carry this around. In fact, I'll, I'll talk more about units later in this class. Uh, we tend to adopt uh, units that make uh, things a lot easier. Uh, in the case of uh, electron volts, the reason that handy is because if you say, you know, what's the strength of a bond, you say, well, that's around one electron volt. It's just a really handy uh, number to use. 
Uh, more importantly, though, uh, if you're thinking about energies in terms of, uh, uh, say, statistical mechanics, the energy of, uh, I'd say, the, the energy fluctuations in a room due to uh, uh, just statistical fluctuations at room temperature are. Uh, 25 milli electron volt. And that's handy because if you find something and it's less than 25 milli electron volt, then that tells you that you know, some activation energy that if you're sitting at a room temperature, it's going to happen spontaneously if it uh, is above 25 milli electron volt, then it won't. It also allows you to kind of scale in your head, you know, how hot is. Uh, what temperature do you need to have uh, something activate if it's uh, 50 milli electron volt? Well, it's going to be you know, twice that of room temperature. Uh, so this, this is a handy way to, to work with it. Uh, so when we discuss these lines of dispersion forces, typically we have an empirical uh, description. Uh, typically, but I would say is it's a handy thing to work with, and The most common of those is the uh, so-called Leonard-Jones potential, or the 612 potential. Bonding so you can think of this as the uh, uh, energy to, to pull two atoms apart goes as four epsilon sigma over R to the M minus sigma over R to the N. Case of the 612 potential, uh, that is 6 and that is 12. So we've got a, a, an attractive and repulsive potential. Uh, this is commonly used for the uh, uh, noble gases. So the noble gases, if you bring them down cold enough, uh, they will solidify into an FCC crystal, and the FCC crystal will be held together by uh, lemon dispersion forces. You having uh, induced uh, dipoles in the otherwise uh, spherical uh, atoms. Um, there's, a, there's a paper by. Uh, Uh, in which they go through and they've uh, determined the epsilon and the sigma empirical parameters for the noble gases. And I, I've actually included this paper in the set of notes on uh, on uh, the principle of variation, and that's because they were using the principle of variation for uh, fitting uh, the functional form of the Leonard-Jones potential. Skipping over these. Uh, so talking about these, uh, this, you're told that it is a uh, uh, empirical 612 potential. Uh, the truth of the matter is this uh, sixth order potential, you can uh, derive this uh, and 
this, this comes about from a second order perturbation uh, theory expansion. Uh, and I've included that in the notes as well. It is actually fairly extensive because you have to have a, uh, uh, you're employing a binomial uh, expansion in order to, to make the approximations you need for this. Uh, and I'm going to leave that away from here. I, I just mentioned that because in uh, Charles Patel's textbook, when he introduces Leonard Jones' potential, he says, oh, this, this comes from a, uh, is derived from a, uh, a perturbation expansion. Uh, and then said nothing else, and that's because it's another three pages of math to actually do to work out. Uh, the uh, 12, the repulsive potential, is uh, due to, uh, was basically due to poly exclusion principles. And, and that's because repulsion. to uh, dipole, dipole. Interaction. You can derive that. The 12 potential, the F equals 12, uh, this is coming about due to uh, uh, really poly exclusion principle issues. For example, if you have your NE, so you've got two noble gas atoms there, uh, NE, NE, and you've got two wave functions. So this would be, say, psi, NL, M, L, 1, and that's going to be psi, NL, M, 2. Uh, the electrons have the same quantum numbers. And, and as a result, as you're bringing these together and you have your core electrons, they also have the same quantum numbers. So you have a, a repulsion between these uh, because you're starting to have overlap of the, uh, the filled shells. So if we have our potential, then we can write our total energy, our total potential, So it's, it's the sum of the pairwise interactions between the atoms. And we have this one half again to get rid of double counting because we're summing over i and summing over j. Uh, now, you may think that this is actually going to be challenging, but the good news is uh, because these potentials go as a uh, R to the 6th and 1 over R to the 12, uh, they, actually, uh, they actually converge uh, relatively quickly. So I wanted to show you that what you can do is you can write out your energy per unit cell as u is equal to 2 epsilon a 1 2 sigma over r to the 12. 
12 minus a6 sigma over r to the sixth, where a sub n is equal to sum capital R not equal to 0, 1 over alpha R to the n. Okay, so this alpha, that is a dimensionless number uh, that is giving us the uh, number of lattice parameters between uh, atoms. So let me, let me let me show you what I'm saying here. It's easier to. Put it this way. So I have a lattice. Let's say I've got a square lattice. A, and I'm putting atoms on the corners of the lattice. And if I define, then R1, R2, R3 as the distances between the atoms, then R1 is equal to A, R2 is equal to root 2a, r3 is equal to root 3a, and then I'm using this alpha as the number of lattice parameters between sites. So that means alpha r1 is equal to 1, alpha R2 is equal to square root 2 alpha. R3 is equal to square root 3, <coughs> three sorry, 5. Merry Christmas. And that also means then that, uh, well, yeah. Has been used. And anyway, so if I, if I use that mechanism, uh, then I can form a uh, numerical sum, and I don't need to uh, erase this. And I include this in the notes, but what I'm hoping you see here is that by the time I get to the second nearest neighbor, the, the sum is completely converged. And in that fashion, I get A12 is equal to 12.13, and A to the sixth is equal to 14.45. Uh, so I can substitute those in here. I mean, this is an empirical formula anyhow. So having something which is accurate out to you know, four or five decimal places is, is not a, a bad way to go. So this means, oh, and this is a This is for an FCC unit cell. If you change from FCC to BCC or to simple cubic or whatever else, uh, that necessarily means that you're changing the distances that are going into your uh, going into your sum. So you'll have to get different uh, different a sub n coefficients for those. Okay, so. If we have this, we can ask ourselves to use it. For example, we can say, uh, you know, given the energy per unit cell, uh, what is the uh, optimal uh, 
R, uh, atomic spacing, little r. So let's write that. Let's write that here. Zero. And that's by taking the derivative with respect to R of U and setting it equal to zero. And it calls U FCC. Because that uh, dictates the, the summation we have. And if we do that, we we'll wind up with. Two epsilon a one two uh, sigma to the twelve minus twelve r to the minus thirteen uh, minus a six two epsilon sigma to the sixth minus six r to the minus 7 equals 0, divided by sigma to the 6, divided by minus 6, and divided by r to the minus 7, and wind up with a 1, 2, sigma to the 6, 2, r to the minus 6, minus a6 equals 0. And with a little bit of math, two more steps, I should say, I get r0 is equal to a to the 1, 2 over a6, 2 to the 1, 6, sigma. We'll write that over here. Express the optimal uh, separation between atoms in terms of the sigma parameter, and then uh, we can find the cohesive energy by substituting this back into here. And that will tell us the, the binding energy. And doing that, we get we get u is equal to two epsilon. Sixth here, we've got a twelve to the outside. Six, 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 two, one, six, 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 Sigma to the twelfth, a one two over a sixth to the minus two, two to the minus two, sigma to the minus twelve minus a six sigma to the six. Six. 
six. That simplifies to two epsilon and six over eight and twelve. Half or u r zero to the minus one half epsilon a six over a twelve. Twelve. So we have the cohesive energy per unicell. And that's going to scale with the epsilon, which is in the front of our uh, pairwise potential. And this is, in general, something which is, uh, well, it's really handy. It's a handy potential to work with. There is a very nice paper that I tried to download today, but we don't have access to it, so I'm going to I'm going to uh, have a scent. Uh, it goes through the uh, <clears throat> application of statistical mechanical methods to look at the finite temperature uh, effects of materials, the heat capacity, thermal conductivity, etc. Uh, and it does everything in terms of the 612 potential, uh, written by Lassar. Rickman, uh, still may be, uh, volume 73, pages 627 through 639, one, nine, nine, six. Uh, it's a cool little paper. I don't know how useful it is, but it, it is, I think, neat. Uh, I was going to go through one more example of what we can do with the, with the 612 potentials and then uh, stop there for the day. Uh, and in particular, I was going to show you how we can look at the elastic properties, uh, such as the bulk modulus, using a derived potential such as the 612 potential. Both modulus the book modulus uh, it, it comes from the, the second derivative of the, the free energy with respect to a change in volume. Uh, and you wind up with B is equal to minus V, P, V, and constant temperature. Actually, I think I've got a video on my YouTube site where I derived this uh, from when I taught MSC 413, no, 513, which is thermodynamics of solids. Uh, <coughs> anyway, this is starting from here. Uh, Starting from here, uh, we know that du is equal to t ds minus p dv, and at t equals zero, p is equal to minus du dv, which means that we can take both modulus and rewrite that as d e by v, e by v, u. <coughs> the bulk modulus uh, as a function of the uh, energy per cell. The volume of the cell is equal to one-fourth a cubed. Uh, and that's because 
Uh, again, we're doing FCC. Right, that's what we had derived there. And if you're dealing with an FCC, Unit cell, you've got atoms on the corners, atoms on the faces, uh, but this is not the primitive unit cell. The primitive unit cell is determined from the uh, rhombohedral. Interior. So the primitive unit cell has one atom So the primitive unit cell is one-fourth the volume of the cubic unit cell And back here uh, Well, stay up here as well Looking at uh, the face, that's where we have uh, touching, right? So we have our our atoms touching across the face of the unit cell. Uh, the distance between the center of each of these atoms is two r. No, it's equal to r. Sorry, exactly equal to r. We're defining the R as the equilibrium separation. And this is our last parameter A. So we have uh, 2R is equal to root 2A, or A is equal to square root 2R, which means that V is equal to 1 fourth. 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3 halves r cubed, or uh, b is equal to 2 to the minus 1 half r cubed, or r is equal to b to the 1 third, 2 to the 1 sixth. That's just from the uh, basic geometry of the FCC unit cell. Uh, now, coming back over here, uh, taking the derivative of the of the energy with respect to the volume, uh, we have our energy in units of R instead. So we can use a chain rule. Why not? If I use a chain rule, to get that d by dv is equal to dr dv d by dr. Okay, well from here, we have that dr by dv is equal to minus one third v to the minus two thirds, two to one sixth. Substituting in V into that, we get D by DR, sorry, DR by DV is equal to R to the minus two, minus one third, two to the one half. 
Okay. It means we can come back to our expression for uh, the bulk modulus. And we can have V, V by V, V by V, U. So bulk modulus is equal to here. Should be two to the minus one half r cubed, right? And then this So this goes into here twice. thirds come out front, I get E is equal to 2 to the 1 half, 1 ninth, R, D by DR, R to the minus 2, rule to get 2 to the 1 half 1 over 9 r minus 2 r to the 1 third d by dr plus r to the minus 2 d squared dr squared r Or two to the one half one over nine r r d by d r squared r squared Computing book modulus of zero Kelvin. 
So at t zero r equals r zero v e by r u equals zero. I mean, we get rid of this term, and we're left with. Finally, the bulk modulus is equal to 2 to the 1 half over 9, 1 over r times the curvature of total energy at r equals r0. So, bulk modulus is inverse to the uh, equilibrium separation and proportional to the curvature of the of the, uh, the, free, of the uh, total energy curve. So this is something that then we can take from the 6-7 uh, potential, or sorry, 6-12 potential, or whatever else have you, for example, density functional theory or uh, Sure,